Hello everyone and welcome to the Laser 102 tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you the different approaches to building a good laser, along with the pros and cons of each, as well as other important info and any tips that might be nice. If you're ever lost, I really recommend that you start with the previous laser video. Cue the little card in the corner. And without further ado, let's get started. The first kind of laser is what I call a storage-based laser, or sometimes a burst laser. Some people would probably also call this a sniping laser. Whatever you call it, doesn't matter. The main thing is that they are built not to fire as fast as the combiner or the lambs node can. Those are some pretty small examples, but gives you an idea. If you look at the power needed versus the damage per shot, you can tell pretty quickly that it can't sustain itself uh, over time. In fact, this one is still charging. Generally, the idea here is to pick the amount of storage you'll need first. This is going to be the determining factor here, either for the damage per shot or just a total amount of energy available before the laser runs out. The number you choose, though, will depend on your exact purpose. One of the more popular things to do is shooting down small planes, <coughs> flying squirrels. <coughs> Lasers are very good at this. If this is your plan, consider using a 0Q or 4Q switch setup, and simply testing how much it takes to shoot down the planes you're thinking of. Usually you won't need that much. For example, here my laser in Terry's, as you can see, is... Oops, wrong key. Not very big, not very expensive, and if you do the math on the tooltip right now, it can put out significantly more damage than it can sustain. And that's perfectly fine, because by the time it's out, there's probably a couple of small planes that are already dead and falling into glorious block confetti. And we're back to the wooden platform because I want to show you my prefabs again. Notice the damage per shot. If you want to poke holes in thickly armored vehicles to tickle the internals with each shot, you can do that. Now, you'll want to add storage on like one or two Q switch setups to deal enough damage per shot to pen the armor you're thinking of. Now, don't forget to add about 10 to 20% more on top because lasers lose damage over range. On larger setups though, you can consider using zero Q switches as well since it will have higher AP and that is actually very efficient or more efficient against smoke and shields. Zero Q will need a lot more oomph though, since it will hit more blocks simply because, you know, it doesn't deal very much damage per shot, but it will also make a bigger hole, which can be really nice if you've got other weapons aiming at the same spot. Note that this kind of setup can also work really well with lamps if you use 0Q or 4Q. As you can see here, even my Regulus is not fully sustainable. If you run the math here, you can see it can't fire 100% of the time with this kind of power. Now, this can be really good to deal with weapons that have long reload times, like missiles or crams or volleys of, you know, big APS shells, for example. Uh, in this case, it's going to be pretty clear the amount of pumps you'll want. You'll want to get it to charge the whole system in about 20, maybe up to 30 seconds, because that's roughly the time it takes between volleys of crams or missiles. Now, allow me to go on a bit of a tangent about output regulators, since it's pretty crucial to this kind of system, right? The idea is that you want burst potential or high damage per shot. And if your laser keeps firing while it's low on power, you're not getting that. So the output regulator is really important, but how do you set it up? Well, this laser here deals 13,000 damage per shot or so. So in the output regulator, you'll want to use a minimum shot energy that's maybe half or three quarters that amount. Something that is going to tell the system, well, you're low on power, stop firing. So let's say, I don't know, 10,000. The exact number is not super important, but you don't want to go too low because that defeats the purpose, right? If the laser is able to charge fast enough to maintain that low number, it won't stop firing and it'll, it won't stop firing really low powered shots, which is not what you want in this case. 
Now this little slider will automatically change to the percentage um, of the value of the minimum shot energy that you use. So in this case, 10,000 energy is 31.2% of the laser capacity. So naturally, you'll want this number to be higher because again, you don't want the laser to fire with low energy. Now, if you go with 100%, you'll have a fairly long uh, downtime between bursts. So, you know, you could go for something like 50% or 75%. It's up to you to see how long you think is all right between your bursts. For lambs, for example, you wouldn't want this to be too long, right? Anyway, this is the idea behind the output regulator. Do note also that if you have a lot of storage, but you actually don't want to be uh, doing that much damage per shot, and you instead just want to be able to keep firing those high damage shots for longer on the charge that's already in the laser, you could lower the energy discharge rate. For example, if I make this 5%, I'm going to do half the damage, but I'm going to be able to fire for twice as long before the laser is completely empty, depending on how fast the pumps recharge it, of course. So output regulators, super important. This is how they work. Moving on. Overall, the main advantage of storage-based lasers is that they lend themselves very well to having high AP, even if you use Q-switches, since AP is more difficult to increase the more pumps you have. This makes shooting through smokes and shields so much easier. For the campaign, you could even make a vehicle with massive laser storage that takes over a minute to recharge to get really high AP and crazy alpha strike potential. A single combiner can discharge a laser in 10 seconds, and you can have more than one, so it could deal its damage absurdly quickly. The main downside, of course, is that you will have a decent amount of downtime between bursts, and the more AP you want, the fewer pumps you'll want to use, and the longer the downtime. Then we have balance setups. In this case, it's a simple matter of doing the math for the damage per shot you want, the number of combiners you want, and adding enough pumps to keep the laser fed. I'll put the formula to figure that out on screen right about now. Generally, you'll want to be able to destroy at least one metal beam per shot, plus a little extra, again, for the damage loss at range. If you're having issues keeping the damage up on a smaller laser system, you should consider using fewer Q switches. Now, I called it a balanced setup because the idea is to recharge exactly as fast as you're spending the energy. However, if you're using an output regulator and multiple combiners, you will end up needing a relatively small amount of storage and a lot of pumps. So if we look here, it can end up looking pretty much like the opposite of a um, storage-based design. So a lot of pumps and a small amount of storage. The main advantages to these setups is that you have no downtime, so there's pretty much no risk of emptying the system before you've destroyed or crippled your target. It is also pretty much the only defense against rapid fire APS other than shields, and assuming you're using zero Q and enough nodes to be able to hit all the shells, it can work pretty well. Unfortunately, having a ton of pumps means it's going to cost you a lot in frequency doublers if you're shooting at things with smoke or shields or both. And speaking of doublers, here's a quick breakdown of the AP values you should be aiming for depending on the situation. Against targets with no defenses, or if you're using your laser for lambs on a vehicle that doesn't use smoke, you shouldn't need to worry about doublers at all, since lasers have a minimum of 40 AP, and 60 even on 0Q setups. Against targets with shields or weak smoke, or for lambs on a vehicle that uses smoke, you'll want around 100 to 120 AP. And against targets with a lot of smoke, you'll want somewhere in the realm of 200 to 400 AP. Now, that would be very expensive, especially on large, sustained setups, but assuming your laser system doesn't get blown up, 
It'll pay for itself surprisingly quickly compared to just pumping extra energy and ignoring the smoke. If you're feeding your laser with engines that have roughly 500 ppm, it'll only take a few minutes of combat for the doublers to pay for themselves. So it's really good. All right, for this next part, I'm going to focus on lands since they can be a bit tricky. For example, if you do it wrong, it's possible to end up with a lambs that shoots at projectiles and burns a lot of energy, but actually fails to destroy those projectiles. And that is a massive waste and a big sad. That said, lambs should pretty much always be either 0Q or 4Q setups. One of the reasons is simply that any damage done above the health of the projectiles is wasted and 1, 2, 3 Q switch setups have high damage per shot, which makes it a lot more likely to overkill. But the overall DPS between 1 Q and 4 Q is the same. While technically 0 Q gets less damage per energy spent, the fact that it has significantly more fire rate and lower damage per shot also means it's even less likely to overkill. And then there's also concerns with targeting different projectiles, which 0Q does best as well because of its fire rate. Now, lambs can be designed to counter specific things. I would generally advise against making lambs for the purpose of destroying large kinetic missiles or any huge missiles for that matter. They can be used to supplement a Seawiz and or interceptors, uh, in those cases, but making a lambs specifically for that is going to be difficult because there's just so much health to burn through. So your main choices are dealing with medium or large missiles that aren't kinetic and crams, dealing with chunky APS shells, or dealing with BERT and small missiles. Now, dealing with BERT and small missiles is actually the simplest thing to do, since you know the damage is going to be coming consistently and in the form of small shells, it's pretty much a given that you'll want 0Q with low storage and enough pumping to put out the damage to destroy all of the incoming shells. There's a strong possibility you'll want a regulator to actually reduce the damage per shot, especially if you have a lot of nodes. And you're probably going to need a lot of nodes because you'll need them to target the different shells. Because retargeting can be a, a problem, definitely. Um, and you'll want to make sure you have a lot of warners in different areas of your vehicle, since detection range of small shells is really short, and that can also be a problem. So if you have a central location with warners, it's very much possible that they won't be able to see uh, shells that are hitting either the very front or the very back of your vehicle, depending on where your warners are. So distribute those around your vehicle and distribute a lot of nodes around your vehicle as well to make sure that different nodes will target different shells. Dealing with chunky APS like pen depth or big kinetic rounds is a different game, however. This time, you'll want to go nuts with storage, since those tend to come in volleys as well. In fact, I would personally give up on trying to tank this kind of firepower permanently, as it's going to cost a ridiculous amount of energy. So just put in whatever amount of pumps you're comfortable with. The hope here is really to nullify a couple of volleys and to give yourself time to hopefully destroy a gun or just generally lower the incoming damage to something more manageable, which should give you an edge to ultimately win the fight. You'll also want to use 0Q because kinetic and penned up shells are speedy little doom nuggets, and even 4Q will struggle to retarget different shells quickly enough. Just make sure you have a ton of storage since it will help with the damage you need to pop the shells. In fact, you may even want to use destabilizers for this as it's going to be really crucial to destroy each shell as quickly as possible. This is what I designed the Regulus's lambs for. It's technically able to tank a few volleys from something like a Tur or a Rhea, uh, tank the Gosshawk or a Thresher Shark for, you know, 
20, 30 seconds, maybe at most. And hopefully in that time, I've dealt enough damage to tip the scales in my favor. This is the goal with this kind of labs. Next, for systems dedicated to missiles and crams, you'll want something like what I mentioned earlier. So a storage based lamps with enough pumps to recharge in about 20 to 30 seconds, because that matches more or less the time to reload missiles and crams. 4Q can really work well here since cram shells and medium missiles are quite chunky and relatively slow, and it gets better damage output than 0Q for the same size system. One big note about LAMS is that I always recommend not only using a regulator, but also setting it up to hold fire at low charge. You'd want to do this because a drained LAMS probably has too little damage to destroy stuff, and if it keeps shooting, it will keep itself drained. And yes, shells and missiles might hit you while it recharges, but it gives your LAMS a chance to recover and be great at zapping things again. Finally, a few tips for even better lambs. Now that might be obvious, but make sure you use the options on the nodes like limiting it to shells or missiles only, picking what gauge of projectiles you want to shoot, etc. And for quick reference, small missiles are equivalent to 250 millimeters, mediums are 500, large missiles are 1000, and huge is 2000. Another big one for me is to actually try to use as short of a range as possible on the nodes. Shorter range means less time spent shooting at things that might miss you anyway, and also less damage lost due to range. Do note that this gives you less time to shoot stuff before it hits you though. You can compromise by giving your nodes different ranges and possibly different, different cones instead of the full 90 degrees. This can really help when you need to fire at a lot of different projectiles in a short amount of time. You should try to place your lambs in a lot of different areas of your vehicle as well. This also has the added benefit of better redundancy and better coverage because part of your vehicle might actually obstruct the view of some of your nodes otherwise. And that should be pretty much all you ever need to know about lasers. Let me know in the comments if you have more questions or what tutorials you'd like to see next. Consider liking and subscribing, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.